Philo Bokli, who was the god of sun and war, uh, and uh, Lodlach, uh, who was the god of rain, and Tescalipoca, who was the god of sorcerers, rulers, and warriors. All right? And uh, Utsilo Pokli, like others, could only be appeased. This god could only be appeased, and that's this one right here, okay? You want to make that god happy. The only way you could appease him was by blood, human sacrifice, okay? And his great temple was on top of the pyramid, Tenochtitlan. Uh, many of the victims were captured in battle, and uh, they were beheaded, and their heads displayed as trophies on what is called a great rack or a wall. And then, now watch this, that they also had such loyalists that they volunteered to be sacrificed to their God. Wow. All right, that's how, that's how very much ingrained they were. And it's thought that over 20,000 were ritualistically killed uh, in just a four day celebration of the temple completion. Man. All right, just a four day celebration, all right? Much of the Aztecs' belief and religion was centered on the dark side. Much of their belief and religion was centered on the dark side. Their, their practices led them into what are actually satanic rituals and customs, which we know is a pretty broad practice today in, a, in our world, unfortunately. Many Aztec gods were about brutal violence. They were very brutal, very violent, and, uh, and warlike. Also, in contrast to Aztec gods, now here's the contrast. The Christian God created all things and saw the need for a one-time only sacrifice. Whereas the Aztec God required many, many, many sacrifices. And this was not just unique to the Aztecs. We find it among many, many other civilizations in the world in history, all right? Uh, there's nothing off limits to what fallen man will worship. There's nothing that's off limits. And that's, that's the de de degeneracy and the de greatness of, of sin. And so it is a, so, so wonderful to be saved, glory to God. Now, like I said, man doesn't stop at creating things, he also will worship himself. Okay, we have the Pharaoh. He was, a man, he was both a man, a ruler, and a god. The Pharaoh, man, ruler, god, all together, all right? Uh, these god kings usually ruled over great resources. They had a lot of wealth. Uh, they were the head of the, civil, of the civil administration. They were the supreme warlord and chief priest of every god in the kingdom. All offerings were made in the name, and, and in his name, and the entire priesthood acted on behalf of the pharaoh. Okay? In fact, he was himself divine and considered the physical offspring of a god. Now you remember now, Moses, God sent Moses to pharaoh. Pharaoh was this godlike creature. And so in effect, we had, and we have more than one instance of this in the Bible, we had this battle of the gods between Pharaoh, the supposed god, and the real god. Yeah. All right? Caesars, Roman emperors worship, uh, Roman emperor worship had its beginnings with Julius Caesar. That's, he was the first one to, to consider himself a god in, in 46 to 44 B.C., uh, he learned it from the Greeks. It's funny, you got a lot to, to, to give the Greeks thanks for. <laughs> All, stuff, right? All right. Uh, the Greeks in turn absorbed the idea from the Egyptians, because you went before them, and the Babylonians. All right. So you see now, it just kind of, we call it, if you study spirit, one aspect of spiritual warfare is called transference of spirits. And so we see this thing laid down, the transference of spirit going down from one to the other. And what happens is you get the people learning about certain things and they get fascinated with it. Today, you go to many of our colleges and universities, they're fascinated with all these things. They consider it higher knowledge, new age type stuff, going back into these very things that God condemned and destroyed. We also have the Aztec rulers that we talked about a moment ago. And of course, we have the... Uh, the Antichrist, and the Bible speaks a lot about the Antichrist, and uh, you know, and these are those are literally a substitute Christ, all right. And um, and we know about the, the the great Antichrist that the Book of Revelation talks about that is to come. David Hume wrote, "Men who delight in playing God until they become a god have long been part of human society." and often at the leadership level. So many of these people who delight in being God, they delight in that whole I, uh, 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 idea, 
you see, he says you often find them in the highest leadership levels. Yeah. And that's what you have to really, really, really be, 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 be watchful and careful of, all right? So, um, man is a worshiper, like I said before, okay? And uh, he will devote himself to something even if it's his own making. History repeatedly shows us that truth is of no concern to the mindless. <laughs> history repeatedly shows us that truth is of no concern to the mindless. They repeatedly fall for what others are worshiping. All right? And I remember uh, several years ago when my wife and I were, uh, actually we were celebrating our 16th anniversary some, some, some years back. And uh, we went somewhere, and I was stunned when I turned on the hotel uh, room's TV set, and I saw free best of web TV. And this is what it said. Bow to comedy. Bow to escapes. Bow to music. Now, this is on television. And I was pretty astonished to see that. And so it's not even hidden. They don't care what it is. Just you bow to it. Worship it. Give reverence to it. Give obeisance to it. Give your substance to it. You know, they, they have, you know, people will go and spend, what, hundreds of dollars, you know, to, to a concert, you know, and won't give $10 in the church offering. So, so the value is placed over here to things that are, that are godless. And when it comes to the things of God, we don't hold that in much value. We will give. Remember I said a moment ago, you will worship. There's no if, ands, about it. It's where you place that worship, where you place the value. Okay? And so we, we have to learn more and more to, to give value to the, to the things of, of God. And I remember I stared at that TV for a long time, and I, and I was pondering these, these words. Do we as a society actually bow or worship to comedy and drama? Do we bow or worship to escapism and entertainment and constant movement and travel? Do we bow or worship to movies and games on the internet? Okay. If these are gods of the modern age, then like the gods of ancient civilization, they demand our allegiance night and day. That we accept their dominance over our lives and bow down to them without question. And that's what these, these gods do. And uh, if these gods are if these gods are the gods of if these are the gods of the modern age, they have little or no tolerance for their subjects to turn away and seek after the real and true God. In other words, if you are, you, you are continuing worshiping and obedience to, to the false God, they don't, want, they don't tolerate you turning to the living God and the real God. That's why many of these entities here, they don't want God in government. Mm -hmm. How often do you hear about God in the media, in the newspapers? Never. You know, okay? Social sciences, oh yeah, you can, you can go and help folks that's in need and, and need social help, but don't talk to God. Don't talk to them about God. Right. We don't tolerate God. We tolerate everything else, and we want you to tolerate everything else, but we don't tolerate you and your God. Mm -hmm. So I want you, I want to bring this down real, real quick. The educational system, they took prayer out of school, remember that? Yeah. You will bow down to our God. We will not bow to yours. Same thing with money. The Bible says that the, that the love of money is, is the root of all evil. We want you to love money, seek money, go after it with everything. Yeah. And, and even, even if it means, you know, divorcing your, your allegiance and submissiveness to the living God. Because we don't care about this God. These are the gods we want you to bow down. Entertainment. Oh, I, well, there's a, there's a church service going on uh, Tuesday night. But there's a concert over here, and there's some other special event going on over there. I'd rather go there, and we do it consistently. We'll sit down and watch a television movie rather than open our Bible. We'll sit down and, and turn on the Internet and get absorbed in that rather than get down on our knees and pray. These are the gods of the 21st century. All right? Man-made religions. We don't like the, what the Bible has to say, so we'll make up our own. So if you hear what I'm saying, say amen. amen. The God of Google. The God of Google. You got it, buddy. All right? So, now. Okay, there we go. All right. So, there was a Star Wars trilogy, and what happened, if you, live, you guys remember the Star Wars trilogy, they planted the idea of an almighty being called the Force. And you guys remember oh, that, yes. okay? Yeah. He's, all, he's the Force. Now, it's interesting, the Force don't have no name other than the Force. The Force. 
He doesn't have any anything that's personal. He's just whatever your mind imagines him to be. He's just a force. He just happens to show up on certain occasions among certain, you know, certain certain people, certain events. But you have no idea what this force is. And there's, and there's a, a significant major contrast between these man-made gods and the God of the Bible. And that's why we're going to, that's why we're taking the time first to show you the wrong stuff <laughs> before we show you the right stuff. If you hear what I'm saying, so say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, other groups refer to deity as a higher power. The same thing. Force, higher power. What does it mean? Whatever you want to mean, nothing. You know? I can turn, I can turn on this thing and, and, and juice it up, and that's some higher power, some electricity. <laughs> okay, that's higher power. Civilizations wanted to make sure they had a God to cover every area of your life. They don't want to leave no room. They don't want to leave you any wiggle room to go to the real God. Anything that you need, we're going to make it up for you. You go there. You bow down there. The devil has no wish, will, inclination, desire for you to go to any other source outside of himself. And as you notice, as we study these things, you know, we, we realize that these civilizations by all over created a God for every area of man's life. The Greeks later decided to honor an unknown God, finally, because they wanted to make sure they had all the pieces covered. Now, in case we missed one. <laughs> Wait a minute, hold on. Okay. All right, hold on. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I just got my, my thing in a little bit out of order. But we're going to talk about that, too. But um, I'm a little bit out of but I'm all right. Okay. Why does man do this? And this is a good question we're gonna, we want to talk about, okay? Why does he so easily worship things that are not God? At the fall, and we go back to Genesis, because everything has its source in the beginning, right there in the Garden of Eden. Okay? Man's spirit became a reflection. Look at that word. Of who? Satan. Satan. He, he became a reflection of Satan. That's when he died. The, the memory originally he was he was he was creating the image and likeness of God. But when he well, when he when he obeyed Satan, he became a reflection of Satan who yearned to be worshipped of God. We find that out throughout the scriptures. This lust is spiritually ingrained in the fallen. We too have a secret desire to be our own God. No, nobody tells us what to do. We don't want to have somebody ultimate authority over us. Jesus addressed this question head on when he said, ye are of your father, the devil. That's why man does it. This, he, he needs to be born again to get out of this trap, okay? But Jesus says, as long as you're in that trap, as long as you're in this condition, you're of your father. This is your spiritual father, the devil, and the lust or desires of your father, you will do. He said you might do. You will do. You have any other choice. You're a slave. You are a slave. You will do what your slave master commands you to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. He didn't dwell in the truth. He didn't honor the truth, teach the truth, live the truth. He, he, came, he came out of the truth because there is no truth in him. There is none. You will not find any truth in any other source other than God, the living God. When he speaketh the lie, he speaketh of his own. In other words, he made it up himself. He didn't get it from God. What was the first thing that God said to Adam when, when, when Adam said, well, I was naked and I hid myself? What was the first thing, what was the first question God asked Adam? Who told you that? What's, what's the assumption? If I didn't tell you, it's not the truth. You didn't get the real thing. Who told you that? It did not come from me. So you see why we are bound, if, we, if, if God is our God, we're bound to what God says. Not what man says, not what philosophy says, not what the media says, not what the entertainment world says. We're bound to the word of God. You, so, so, and, and so the Bible says here that when the devil speaks, he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Whoa! That is so straight and direct. Oh my goodness, you can't. He said he's a liar and the father of it. That is the truth. He's not name calling. He's not being mean. He's not trying to, you know, slam the devil. He's just telling you what it is. He's a liar. And he's the father of all liars. And so that's what God is, that's what God is saying. Okay? Now, I'm hoping this next video do will this next one work? Do it on here? The, 
Leap of faith. Okay, I'll tell you what this is. It's going to work. It will work. Okay. It will work. It would, you the man, I love you. <laughs> How many of you seen that movie, uh, uh, The Ten Commandments, back in 1957? And this is that scene. <laughs> My favorite scene. And I I'm hoping if we can click it, I don't know, see if it works. If not, you click. Oh, me click. All right. Well, hold on. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, if you can see it on here. No, um, no. Then you click it there. Oh, I can click it here. Is that how we did it before? Yeah, start it remotely. Go ahead. Remote. Oh! Remote. 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 Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Got it. So what's this button for? Uh, no, nope, that didn't do it. Okay, back it up. No, that didn't do it. No, I didn't. I didn't uh, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Well, maybe I'll do this. Oh, yeah. Is God. Is God. <laughs> Isn't that powerful? Now you have to have seen the whole movie. Pharaoh was utterly defeated by God. And he winds up at the end, you know, sitting on his throne, having to declare his God is God. Wow. And that's amazing. So anyway, I had to I had to I had to show that. I had, had to show that. So praise God. So right now I'm gonna ask my wife to come up. We're going to uh, have a have a break, and uh, my wife is going to come and share some things, okay? Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Thank you. God is working it out, amen? amen? He's working it out. He's a great God. So I believe we are going to uh, prepare for lunch now, and... We'll have a time of just fellowship with lunch, and then I'll come back and we're going to gather and get into our groups. And you have your number. If you don't have a number, I'll make sure you get a number, and I'll give you a little bit more instruction about that when we come together. So, uh, Pastor Bill, if you wouldn't mind maybe coming, we'll bless the food here. Yeah. You're yeah. welcome to. Yeah, we get about, uh, about, about five minutes before uh, show up. Uh, you have to talk amongst themselves. Or, uh, or, or if you want to say, say something to them that would sure. straighten them out while I... Uh, <laughs> so you'll be uh, welcome to uh, sit where you're currently sitting if you'd like to do that for lunch and then uh, get together in your groups when we do our breakout session. Any questions that you have uh, while we're uh, kind of transitioning, I can take note of some of those and maybe uh, Vince Porter can address some of them as we go along. Lots of guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lots and yeah. lots of lots guys. Of guys. I'm, I'm, I'm learning a lot. I hope I hope you are too. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I'm thinking that the um, Hindu gods are the most dangerous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they're like, they I'm seep serious. into society in every, I mean, you know, yoga, exercising, the food, the holistic, mm -hmm. they, but it all comes on in a nice way. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting, Sandy. That yes. Uh, how you said how these gods enter in in so many different capacities. Every aspect places of you're life not even you know that you're not looking for. Exercise, mm -hmm. you know, food, mm -hmm. or we'll say we don't do. We wouldn't say it like like calling out sick and claiming your mother's sick and when she's not. You say I'm not going to do that because of karma. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. Karma yeah. 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 We hear a lot about karma, don't we? Yeah. What is karma? <laughs> Good question. Maybe we'll have had the events before to talk about that. Well, it's interesting. I'm, I'm real uh, authority on a lot of this stuff because I used to study a lot of the uh, occult and yeah. okay. uh, Eastern religion and so forth. Yeah. You've got the the, uh, the Chinese God, but the Indian God. You've got the uh, you also have, it's interesting that, you know, if you go through history, in the Egyptian, Egnot was actually the only god, so-called Egyptian god who believed in only one god and throughout all the gods, except for one, which is the sun god. Until he died, they started erasing from history. Now, there's a lot of stories that actually involved in it. I mean, there is, you know, you got, you got the, you know, you got the wicked version of God, the movie they believe in, you know, you got, when well, we talk about the Egypt, uh, we talk about the the, uh, the Greeks. The funny, what the Lord showed me once is that 
uh, Hercules himself is a wannabe version of Jesus himself, but he was considered to be the son of Zeus, who becomes, uh, as you go, as you learn into the story of um, Hercules, he was uh, born by a, a mortal mother who was, had, uh, had sex with Zeus. Which so I mean, you think about, you kind of see where some type of comparison would be a little sneaky, but I mean, you start to understand the history, but you start to see how we're in a copycat of a lot of things of their religions to Christianity with doesn't even hit the target at all, but you can see how easily it can boss you. It's, thank you for sharing. It's, real, it's oh, really yeah. eye-opening. It's really eye-opening. Uh, we've already discovered a lot. I know mm -hmm. Evangelist Porter's laid a foundation for some of this to where we're going to go later on as we proceed throughout the day. But I want to see the movie Wonder Woman. Anybody else go, go, go see yeah. that? I'll share something with you secretly. Um, I, you know, I used to like to think, you know, like I could be Wonder Woman, you know, instead of yeah. you know, Wonder Woman. And just having dialogue with people about that, some of the things you were saying about the Zeus and all that, I, I had no idea about all of the all of that gods and all of that stuff that was in that movie. So it's just really pretty eye opening. Yeah, we, we, we're, we're a little bit thing. behind time, and, and I, I didn't realize how far behind time we are. So we might have kind of move yet. Yeah. Unless you guys want to hang out at 4 o'clock. Oh, oh, he did. Oh, okay. Yeah, we just closed the first Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. You got to go. Did you have a breakout? Yeah. That's what I'm scared of. Yeah. 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 And there's interest when you talk about what it was on the Amazon, so people don't know about the Amazon. The Amazon itself, they captured men to have their way with them, but they would actually kill their men on top of that. They also, if they had male children, they would kill them. They wanted only females in their tribes. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of people don't realize. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Oh, yeah. So we're going to get into our breakout groups, and uh, we'll make, starting from my left, this will be table number one, two, three, four, five, and uh, let me do, let me redo that. Starting with this table, because it's going to be six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right. So one's over here, two, three, four, and you can get into your groups. And I'll come by and I'm going to give you the topic that you're going to be discussing. And you'll pick a person uh, who'll share for your group, what you come up with.